Hello, Nicole. Hey, how's it going? How are you? So, Nicole, um, you have been covering uh, for several weeks, if not months now, the Enoch Burke case, and he has turned up at the school again today. He's racking up uh, bills of over €3,000 at this stage. Um, Give us a bit of an update on where we're at now. Oh, well, Zara, I suppose to give you an update on where we are now, we have to kind of go back to where it all began. So I'll take you back all the way to the end of the last school year in May when the principal of Wilson's Hospital School, Neve McShane, she was the principal at the time, and she issued a request that all uh, teachers use a student's preferred pronouns of they and them and use a new name for that student. Now, Enoch Burke indicated that he wouldn't use this student's preferred pronouns, even though he didn't actually teach the student. And he then confronted the principal about this at a school service and a school dinner and it's for this confrontation that he was then placed on paid administrative leave. Now when the school then went on its summer holidays and when it came back after its summer holidays he showed up at the school even though he was on leave and then that led to the school going to court to seek an injunction to try to prevent him from showing up at the school. They were then granted that injunction but he then continued to show up at the school so then this this school went back to court indicated that he was still showing up at the school. So that meant that he was then in contempt of court. So all he had to do to purge this contempt of court was to give an undertaking that he would not show up at the school. However, he refused to give this undertaking and then he also indicated that he would continue to show up at the school. So that's what then landed him in jail. For, so for actually just being in contempt of court, that's why he was jailed. And that's why he spent 108 days in jail. But then just before Christmas, a judge decided that he should be released as he was exploiting his imprisonment for his own end and it was also costing the taxpayer too much money and it didn't look like there was any um, pro- uh, probability of him actually purging his contempt. So he did warn him that if he did show up at the school again, he could be thrown back in prison. And lo and behold, after the Christmas holidays, Enoch Burke went back to, back to the school. That led to the school going back to court again and to try to seek another measure to try to make him stay away. So it initially sought the sequestration or the temporary seizure of his assets, but a judge decided that perhaps fining him would be a more appropriate measure. Now in the middle of all of this he was actually dismissed properly as well from school after a disciplinary uh, hearing um, and then the, he did continue to show up at school the 700 euro fine that has been imposed for every single day that he refuses to give an undertaking to stay away from the school. That kicked in last Friday and since then he has been showing up to school so as you say racking up quite a substantial bill at this stage. And all of that made so complicated, Nicole. And good job on explaining it thus far. Anyway, um, but that it, along the way in the proceedings that led up to him being dismissed from the school, Enoch Burke was taking action against the school, while at the same time the school was taking action against him. Yes, that's right, Gavin. So that's another element to it. So Enoch Burke sought several ways to try to uh, actually overturn the injunctions that were issued by the High Court. The High Court pointed out to him that the only way doing this was to file an appeal. So he has filed an appeal to the Court of Appeal. That's going to be heard in two weeks' time, and that's an appeal against those injunctions. But at the same time, the full trial of the action, as it's called, about this whole dispute, that is due to be heard before Easter, when the school will be able to set out all of its case, and also Enoch Burke will be able to set out his case against the dismissal. And Nicole, you've been at the school gates for a couple of the days now. I mean, what is the atmosphere actually like down there? Is it quite hostile? Is it quite tense? Do you speak to Enoch Burke? Does he talk to the media? What, what's it like down there? Um, well, generally, Zara, he comes in, you know, about quarter to nine or so. Um, he generally doesn't talk on the way into school. He is being dropped off and collected by his dad at the moment, though. We have seen him driving in the past. I know some people have had uh, questions about whether he can drive or not. We have seen him driving in the past, but at the moment, his dad is dropping him in and collecting from the school. Some days on the way out, he does talk. We do ask him questions, but he doesn't really answer the questions. He usually tends to have what seems like a pretty pre-prepared speech, and then he just uh, regurgitates that at the moment he doesn't really answer any questions from any of the reporters there in terms of the students I mean it's it's difficult to say how it's affecting them it must be affecting an awful lot of them they tend to just go about their business they go in and they come out they don't stop or talk to us and neither do their parents as well and you can obviously understand that you know it is a very unusual situation that they are having to deal with at the moment Um, It is very unusual, Nicole, and perhaps even unprecedented, maybe you might know better than us, uh, that the idea that somebody who's in breach of a civil action would actually be facing fines like this on a daily basis, like Enoch Park currently is. 
Yeah, it is very unusual. Like we have seen in the past, the companies have been fined for uh, breaching, uh, breaching injunctions, but not so much individuals. And if that sequestration or temporary seizure of his assets had gone ahead, uh, that would have been extremely unusual. That would have, in fact, been the first of its kind. Um, so this is very unusual. As I say the whole thing is due to be reviewed now next week on the 10th of February because uh, Mr. Justice Brian O'Moore, who issued uh, this order that he could be fined, uh, he said that if he doesn't, uh, if doesn't have the desired effect, that uh, he would be uh, minded to review it and it could always be increased if it wasn't having the desired effect. So it remains to be seen what he does do when he reviews it now next week um, because it's difficult to really see, you know, on his teacher's salary how he can afford to pay it. Indeed, Enoch Burke last week indicated that anyone in his position wouldn't really be able to afford to pay it. So the court didn't really want to re-imprison him again for various reasons that it previously set out and as I mentioned earlier on. But if he can't pay it and if he keeps on showing up at the school, it may, it may be just the case that the court may have to look again at re-imprisonment of a measure of making him uh, stay away from the school and as a sort of, I suppose, punishment for the fine before this whole trial of the action is heard. And of course, then the, the outcome of that may be very different. We'll just have to wait and see what the outcome of that is. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, for, you'll have to have you in studio the next time, but uh, thank you so much for Thanks, joining Nicole. the group chat this week. Thanks, guys.